Hey, Andre. Um, do you have a sense of how closely the game's going to be watched in Jamaica, and uh, will they be showing it at your uh, bar and restaurant? Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of fans back in Jamaica, so um, I'm pretty sure they're all excited. Um, they're looking forward to the game, and um, whatever it's going to take, I have to make sure that game is shown live in, in my sports bar. Let's go to the gentleman right behind them. There you go. Don't forget to tell us your name, name of your organization, please. Uh, Andre, uh, Larry Henry with SBI Soccer. Um, what's the biggest uh, threat that LAFC uh, you know, has offensively? Obviously, you've played against them several times. A lot of thrilling results between you guys. Um, just wanted to see what you've seen from them in film. Thank you. <laughs> they have a great team. You know, um, great players, Aranga, Carlos Villa. So um, those guys are big time players and um, they've been performing very well. So we know they have a very good offense and um, yeah. All right, let's go to the last row right there. Hi, Andre, uh, Steve Cangelosi with MSG Network. Uh, all the players are motivated to win for themselves, obviously. Can you talk about how much there's a feeling in the room to win for Jim Curtin, the second longest tenured coach in the league? And he's always been mild-mannered and a gentleman with us. Is there a side to him that maybe we don't see as maybe only the players do? Thank you. No, I mean, Jim is probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met, you know. Jim doesn't yell at you. If he yells, then you know it's, it's really bad. You know, he's, he's easy going, you know. Um, he's just super cool, super chill, you know, and um, he's a great coach and he's just a, a great person. You know, you can talk to him about anything and um, he's a guy that makes you want to play for him. And, you know, if he believes in you, then it's it's a really good thing for you because when he believes, he believes. Let's go to the gentleman on the left. Good afternoon, Andre. Gerardo Tavares will be on the pitch. So LFC are the second highest goal scoring team in all of the league with 66 goals for, right behind your team with 72 goals for. How do you feel or how do you plan on stopping such a dominant offensive force given the star set attack that LAFC have with Vela and Arango? Both have been in incredible form. <laughs> Yeah, as I said earlier, they have a very um, good offensive unit. Um, <laughs> we have a pretty good defensive unit as well. And um, yeah, it's going to be in their home. It's going to be a tough game. But um, we're going to go there. We're going to have some fun. We're going to enjoy the moment. We're going to give it our best shot. and. Um, We'll see what happens. Let's go to the um, lady in second row, please. Hi, Andre. Uh, Shandrima from Women United. Um, I moved here, actually, in 2014, so I got to see you just a tiny bit. Um, I'm wondering what it's been like watching your team evolve over the years and, and grow so much. Can you describe it a little bit? Yeah, um, growing with, with the club, you know, since I've been there 2014, the, the club has really come a, a, a long way. Um, I think the biggest thing is that the culture has changed and um, we are really more of a club that's never satisfied. You know, we, we always want to win and you know we're, we're not just okay with being in the league. You know we want to be one of those clubs that every time you talk about the MLS you know our, our name pops up. So um, I think the owners and the, and the technical directors, sporting directors have done a really good job bringing in players, you know, who wants to win. You know, we're competitors that, that's gonna fight every, every, every week and try to get better every year. So um, I'm just happy to be a part of this club and, you know, watch it grow from, from 2014 to where we are right now. I, I'm really proud of, of, of this group and, um, we're still gonna try to, to get even better. We're, we're still not where we wanna be yet, you know, and we wanna be really consistent and um, that's our aim. All right, the next year you're gonna go to the gentleman in the back row, then the gentleman right in front of him, and we'll finish here in the front row. 
Joe Reedy, Associated Press. Just wondering what this playoff push has been like for you guys and what has also been kind of a jam-packed time in the Philly sports calendar with how the Eagles are doing, Phillies in the World Series. Just what's the support been like and have you, have you found you guys kind of fighting for attention a little bit? Yeah, the, the support's been unreal. You know, we have the best, we have the best fans in the world. You know, so um, it, it's really going well in, in Philadelphia right now. You know, the Phillies are doing really well, and um, the Eagles are doing very really well, and then you have the Union, you know, so there's also pressure. <laughs> but um, we have to deal with that, and um, it, it's, it's a great time to be a part of Philly sport. And um, yeah, we're in a good spot, so hopefully we can we can really bring it over the line. We go to the fourth row. Hey, Andre. Josh Gross with the LA Daily News. Um, talk about the pandemic period and how you guys came out of that. Um, you won a supporter shield during that period, and clearly you came out on the other side. Now you're winning an MLS, or you're in position to win an MLS Cup. Uh, what were the lessons that you took away from that period? How did you, as a group, handle that? Yeah, it was a, it was a very tough moment. You know, not just for our club, but I think for the entire world. You know, but um, I feel like during that time, um, it's really brought us together and we really had a chance to really take things into perspective and to realize that you can't take anything for granted. You know, and, and I feel like the way our team is, is built, you know, that moment really brought us closer together. You know, we had some, some locker room talks and I remember right before going into the lockdown, we, we played here in LA, you know, in a, in a really entertaining 3-3 game, you know, and then um, we had the lockdown, we came right back out and, you know, the guys were just hungry, you know, and um, we want to win, you know, we have a group of guys that, you know, we just show up every day and, and, and fight, you know, so to be where we are today, you know, the club being in the, the first ever MLS Cup, you know, it's it's a it's a big deal. You know, and um, it's a great moment. We we really need to enjoy the moment because, you know, there's a, a bunch of other clubs that wish they were here today. You know, so we have to enjoy the moment, but we also have to realize that you know, it's it's good to be here, but it's also really good if you can take the last step. Let's go to front row. Andre, thank you for your time. Fabian Rankle from Area Sports Network. With being on the MLS uh, Best 11 and three other your teammates, how are you guys celebrating the, the news and how are you feeling going into the match knowing that? Yeah, it's, it's great news. You know, um, you're always happy when you can get these individual accolades. You know, but um, we're going to enjoy the moment a little bit, but also we have to look at the bigger picture and to, to know that it would be a even better feeling to be celebrating these individual accolades with the uh, MLS Cup. So we're going to enjoy the moment, but we have to really stay focused and, and to remember that, you know, the, the biggest trophy that you play for in the league is still on the line. So we kind of have to keep that in the back of our heads, enjoy the moment a little bit, but we also have to remain focused. All right. Thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you, you very guys. much. Gerardo Tavares would be on the pitch. So this is the first time Philadelphia's Union was, or that is there in the MLS Cup final. Is there anything you'd like to say to the fans watching back in Philly and the fans making the trip all the way, all the way here to LA? Uh, we have great fans at home. Uh, I'm sure uh, a lot of them will come here as well and support us. Uh, and we have to say thank you for them, for the support of the whole season. <clears throat> Good. Let's go right behind them and blue right there. Daniel, uh, Larry Henry, SBI Soccer, thanks for the time. Um, just wanted to ask, um, obviously last year you came in, a uh, new adjustment to a new league, country, um, and then this year your production and stats have really jumped up. Uh, what things changed for you uh, from last off season to this season to help Philadelphia <coughs> get to this point today? Thank you. Yeah, last year I arrived during the season. Uh, the team played already 10 games. Uh, almost when I when I got here, uh, I needed time to get used to 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 everything. You know, it was a huge change for me 
for my family as well. Uh, uh, so I needed time to, to get used to, to my teammates. Uh, they need time to, to get used to, to my playing style. Uh, so, so yeah, I think the key is the time. Uh, this year, just everything went, uh, worked out well. Uh, they know me, I know them better. I know the style, how the team played. Uh, and uh, that's why I scored more goals and gave more assists. Next question, please. Daniel, can you talk a little bit about the differences in a team like Philadelphia and a team like Los Angeles? And you know, what are their basic differences? One team has a lot of big name players. The other team is more of a, uh, you know, a sort of like blue collar. So, how would you characterize the differences between the two teams? I would like to say more about ourselves. You know, I think we have a very good team. Uh, we are together. Uh, we don't have big names like them, but uh, our strength uh, is in the team. And we are fighting and working for each other every time. Uh, and every game, if we need somebody, uh, every time somebody else just step forward and he shows that, uh, that he is good and he can help us. Uh, for example, last game, uh, Dre had a great save uh, when we were down 1-0. And after that, we, we scored uh, the equalizer goal. Uh, so I would say that uh, our strength is in the team. And uh, they have obviously very good players uh, individually, which we respect. But, uh, but I really uh, believe that we have a better team. Let's go to AP in the back row. <clears throat> Joe Reedy, Associated Press. For you, what's it like? during this playoff push and also kind of being in the middle of a sporting culture where you guys are doing well, but the other two major teams in the city are doing well. I think it's a lot different from, you know, what goes on in Europe and everything. Yeah, it, the system of the of the league is, is different here. <clears throat> uh, we are really excited that we have the Eagles and the Phillies who, who are doing great this season. And we support them and uh, rooting for them. I hope they can they can win it as well, uh, and also obviously us. Uh, so yeah, it's exciting for me as a European. Uh, how you said it's different, but uh, but but it's also good. Let's go to Josh next to the last row. Thank you, uh, Josh Gross with the LA Daily News. Thank you for the time. Both Andre and Alejandro talked about the change in culture that Philadelphia experienced. Obviously, you weren't there for most of that change. You just <coughs> arrived. But when you entered the locker room, what did you see from the team? What, what was that change in culture that you first met when you arrived in Philadelphia? <laughs> I think I arrived in the new culture, you know. Uh, um, a lot of things doesn't change since I'm here. <clears throat> uh, we have some new players, uh, but since I'm here, I, I feel the same that uh, we are playing for the win every time, and uh, we want to show that uh, we have a very good team, and uh, and we want to win as as many game as much games as we can, and uh, as much trophies as we can. Do we have another question for Daniel? All right, thank you very much.